So MSF has been running medical programs in northeast Syria since 2013. After six years of warfare, as people haven't been able to get those vaccines and, and those normal routine schedules happening for their children. So we see more and more cases of measles, uh, more and more cases of whooping cough, all of those vaccine preventable diseases. There's areas which are an active conflict zone as we speak. Raqqa city is one of these areas. Al Bab today is one of these areas. But there are also many areas which are not in an active front line. And those areas are actually accessible. How we work is that we stay in the safer areas and the moment that people are able to leave conflict areas or that conflict areas become stable, we try to respond to the, to the needs at that moment. The impact of this conflict will be felt for a long time because you have children who are six now who know nothing, nothing but war. I can see that people are scared of what will come in the future because the war is not finished and people try to rebuild their lives, they, they really try, but they are also very scared that there might be a next uh, conflict. The community there has been disrupted, has been impacted by the war. You can see that people are suffering from trauma, from depression, from anxiety problems, from fear. So after six years of war, it's clear that the mental health needs have gone up. So that's why it is important to have a psychosocial component into the services that MSF is setting up so that we at least are able to deal with a, with a need that is much higher than, for example, before the war. Every time a conflict area is kind of returning a little bit to normal, so there's no longer fighting, is that it's full of uh, unexploded ordinances, full of mines, full of booby traps. And we find those booby traps in houses, um, under the carpets, in the fridge, or as extreme as that they're deliberately put in teddy bears. It makes refugees in Turkey or other places or displaced people in Syria being anxious to go home because they see that so many people die because of just open the fridge. So we've seen children come in with blast injuries from explosive devices, from playing with toys or from being out in the field. The authorities try to demine, but there's just not enough demining actors for the geographic area that we're talking about. It's massive and it is heavily, heavily mined. If there are actors who are present, like who can scale up, that needs to happen. If there is an issue with money, then donors should give those actors money to be able to scale up their activities. Because the rebuilding of their lives, the support by humanitarian actors, that all starts with demining.